back to the Flex One Podcast. We are here today. Uh, we're going to intro you to a, an interview. First off, though, uh, Ryan, how you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Harrison, how are you? Oh, you know, I'm doing pretty well. Pretty well. I'm pretty excited to share our interview today with everybody. Um, we had a chance to go to Baton Rouge to Louisiana State University and interview their head coach, Dave Geyer. Um, just a quick background on Dave. I've known Dave Geyer for a little while now. He was a club coach uh, when I, in a, in a past life, lived in North Carolina, and he uh, went down to coach at the, uh, I believe it's Tiger uh, Aquatics uh, club team down in uh, Baton Rouge, and then now he's the head coach with the uh, LSU Tigers. Um, before we get started, do you have uh, anything else to add there, uh, Mr. Uh, Rosenbaum? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say that one of the interesting things to preface before we go into this interview is that uh, we were both SEC athletes. And when people think of the SEC, they think of football. It's one of the highest standards of football. It's basically where people go before they go to the NFL. Indeed, that is a flex Easter egg. I did swim in college, not just a coach. <laughs> um, and it's important to note that the SEC for swimming is arguably, I can make a strong argument against anybody else out there, um, the strongest conference in the nation. Not only because they consistently have top five, top 10 teams all throughout the conference, but uh, regular season, dual meet season, and the actual conference meet is arguably the hardest meet outside of NCAAs in the nation. You know, you have obviously clearly good schools out of uh, Cal, Stanford, Texas, all over the country in different conferences. But when it comes to the SEC, you have so many different um so many different competitive advantages all across the conference. You have Georgia with their uh, mid-distance IM and distance. You have Florida with their now newly minted sprint group, distance group, mid-D uh, freestyle. You have Alabama coming up as a huge sprinting yeah. sprinting core. Um, just regardless of who you're going against, when you have a dual meet against a du- uh, an SEC team, you have to bring your A game. Well, yeah, and I think just uh, as a you know matter of fact of being in the sec right that that brings with it all of the rivalries that have have really grown out of you know admittedly other sports i think right you know whether that's football or basketball even baseball to some extent right there's a lot of really massive rivalries there you know florida versus georgia florida versus tennessee georgia versus tennessee you know you have newer ones right texas a&m is getting in there you have alabama versus auburn these are huge rivalries for people who are going to those schools fans of the schools from the southeastern conference geography and then when you port that over into swimming it carries the same weight right for sure, so for sure you know even if it's something like a november dual meet right where it's you know florida versus georgia for example you know that's not when they have the dual meet but for my example, that's going to have a lot of connotations to it, right? You know, there's a lot of rivalry there. And I think one other thing I would add, right? You know, I think, you know, you could have a lot of listeners saying, well, you know, the Pac-12, big conference, agreed. But I think a big difference, especially with like the SEC championship meet and the meet season, it falls a little bit earlier in the calendar. So people rest heavily, you know, typically for that championship meet. So that leads to a level of competition, I think, that maybe you miss out a little bit on some of those that fall after that. Yeah. You know, so it's really highly competitive. um, And I think you'll get a good idea of, you know, what somebody who's trying to really uh, lift their program up from an already pretty good spot to the top of the the pack there, what kind of stuff he's looking at uh, in this interview. Exactly. So without further ado, everybody, Dave Geyer of LSU. Enjoy. So anyways, how's, how's everything going? Great. How was, how was practice this morning? Practice was good. Um, we're in a, a pretty a pretty deep week of training. Um, we have the women have Kentucky and Tulane next week. The men have Kentucky and SMU. So we knew just with October, this is a week where we got to get a good base of work done. So we've been pretty heavy on them this week. Yeah. What does the beginning of a season normally look like for you? I mean, we were talking to UF the other day and they're more so, you know, they, they spend the first month highly technical. They're doing 25s every practice, like literally drills the entire right. workout. Is right. That- um, we, we hit a little bit, of, a little bit of fitness first. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just, I feel you got to have that fitness base in before you hit the technique side. Mm-hmm. So we spent the first week of school and about halfway through the second week, just trying to swim them a little bit, get that fitness level, get the legs back under them. And then we probably did the same about two weeks of, of, of starting to hit some technical aspect of things, mix in some training. Um, and then really after Labor Day, we started to get into building into training for a couple of weeks um, okay. to, to, to set up for October. I like that. In terms of cross training, what are you guys trying to do? Is it just more so let's just That's throw them in the pool? Yeah. yeah, we, um, so the beginning, and it's, and it's changed every year, you know, we, for, 
guess since I've been here, we've done this this circuit at the beginning of the season, and it's it's really just a, a get fit quick type thing, okay. a, yep. a mix of P90X, and okay. and it's varied anywhere from, you know, you have 65 people on the roster, you have 65 different exercises in the weight room, and you're going 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, or 10 on, 30 on, just really trying to pump through it, um, and, and, and what, what, I, what I saw about that, there, there's a lot of stuff we liked about it, um, you know, but what I didn't like about it is, because we were so spread out, you had athletes that were able to hide a little bit in the mm-hmm. weight room. Yeah. Um, so we really, we really, really, really toned it down this year, um, and we're a lot more specific. Where it was about, I think, ten exercises total, and we had groups of four or six rolling through things at the same time. So you're able to see a whole lot more. Be a little more uh, focused. Uh, in yeah, on what's be, going be on. a lot more focused. We tried to make it a. I mean, you guys know dry land and weights. It's hard to make anything really swim specific. For sure. So there's a lot of just general strength, a lot of core type work, um, a good bit of aerobic stuff, just trying to get their heart rate going through it too. Um, but we added sort of a competitive edge to it. So we had, uh, I think it was 14, it was 14 teams of four. So you, okay. on, on every, on every exercise you had like team seven versus team eight and team one versus, eight. so you're competing against the other team and we had like strength that. staff and coaches at every station sort of counting reps or keeping score on things. We made it competitive. So at the end of every circuit, once our strength coach got through everything, we sort of announced the winner of the day. Um, with things, so it just it added a little bit more of a competitive flair to it, and kept everybody a whole lot more accountable within. Yeah, within it keeps the team. everybody engaged in what's going on. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Do so you feel like you use strength tradition in a traditional sense, right? The distance swimmers aren't doing as much heavy lifting. The the sprinters are doing more power work. They may even lose a, a swim workout to a strength workout. Yeah, that and that and that's something we played with a lot. Um, you know, we've we've been fortunate and unfortunate and fortunate um, with our strength coaches. You know, we had a strength coach here since I've been head coach. We had one for four or five years straight. Um, and, and he admittedly didn't know anything about swimming. I mean, that's, that's what you usually get with a strength coach. They're, they're football based. They get a second sport. Oh, swimming. What do we got to yeah. do? And he was really open minded um, in, in terms of trying to learn the sport and get things going and understand our sport a whole lot more. Um, and then the second stroke strength coach we had here, he worked with swimming before he came in. He was at Cincinnati before, so he had okay. something there. So he had a little bit, a little bit of base behind that. Um, his, his, he's a great coach, and, and I love him, and he's still here. He's, he's with football only, but his, his mindset was that he could really only help the swimmers off the blocks and off the walls. And I, I tried to reverse his mindset on that. I'm like, you got to look at us as athletes and, yeah. and know that there's a whole lot more to strength that you can do in the weight room from that. And, and, and slowly he became up with that. And he had a, an intern with him the past year. Um, and, and I saw him working with another sport. And he was really open-minded and just trying to try different things. And, and, and we've been fortunate now where he's became full-time and he has our sport and volleyball nice. as well. Um, and then does any extra time with football. And he's been, he's been great this year with us. Um, so that was one of the things in July I sat and talked with him, you know, I, I I sort of set him up to, to fail a little bit. I, you know, we were talking about football strength training, and I just said, you know, do your do your D backs lift the same as your linemen? And they're like, of wow. course not. And like, <laughs> I said, all right. You so why them. so why are our sprinters lifting the same as you know the guys that the guys that that race for 19 seconds or the women that race for 22? Why are they lifting the same for people that races are between a 135 and, and and two minutes? Yeah. Yeah, and they just sort of looked at me dumbfounded, like we need to we need to change this. I said, yes, we do. You verbally I said, I said I'm, I'm great. You came up with that idea. <laughs> um, so yeah. you know, the for the first in, in the weight room, our first after we got out of that circuit, um, our first weight session or or, or, or plan was, was was just a general strength plan. So it was, it was higher reps, lower volume, just trying to build that base a little bit um and next week we're actually gonna we're gonna transition into more what we're gonna do where our sprinters are gonna be you know lower in their reps probably increasing the weight a little bit start to work some plyometrics into it um our mid our mid distance or mid sprint whatever you want to call them group they're going to be doing a little bit higher volume still um and then our, our distance guys and there's a few in that in that mid volume where um and i've had this in the past where like you know our, our top distance guy that ever came in here if he went into the weight room and looked at a weight he got sore he didn't have to touch it so he just he always he always did dry land um so we have okay. i think there's four or five on the team that I'll have them. It'll be dumbbells. It'll be it'll be lighter stuff. They'll yeah. they'll still lift weights, but a lot of it's more just heart rate focused with with a general strength plan in it. So we, yeah. we do break things up in the weight room for them. Good. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it's crazy. I mean, I feel like the everyone's stereotypical idea of a swimmer is like you know you can you can spot a swimmer anywhere if you're at the grocery store and you see someone with broad shoulders, right. all that kind of stuff. But man, you walk around the SEC any SEC team these days at SEC championships and 
guys are big. Any athlete. Like the, it could be any the athlete. sprinters are just massive yeah. and like, yeah, any athlete. But even even from that standpoint, it's not that, that whole that whole thing where it's, oh yeah, you're a sprinter, you're just this, this beefcake. Right. And then you're a distance swimmer, you're this like lengthy, lean guy. Like right. everybody just has Everybody's muscle strong. on them. Everybody's strong. That's and definitely and been a progression, I think, in the sport overall, absolutely. right? It's yeah. a lot more physicality, a lot more, you know, I think people who might have been more athletes and gone towards another sport, you know, just physically gifted athletes. I think a lot more of those people have been pulled into swimming. It seems like oh my gosh, yeah. big guys. And I think I think I think dry land and weights is, has been and, and still is sort of that missing link. Oh yeah, within our sport, yeah. I think there's still so much ahead for swimming that can be learned from strength training that can help us in the water. I think we're starting to get into that curve a little bit. I think you're going to start to see that. And I think you know, some of the stuff that, that, that Steve did with Caleb and, 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 and things going on in Texas, I think, I think you're starting to see some of that start to come around a little bit where that athleticism that you can generate on land is really important. Yeah. I think that's, in the water. I think that's just a general trend in swimming. Honestly, mm-hmm. I think swimming used to be, yeah. um, I mean, not to, not to really, you know, bad talking, but I think swimming used to be just, just generally like a, you need to be a badass and just train as many yards right. as possible. And mm-hmm. now we're starting to get into that whole, you know, like high, high imp- improvement um, attitude for sports where, you know, maybe we can change a second off of your 50 freestyle with your diet or right. half a second in the, in the weight room, that kind of stuff. A more just, comprehensive, you yeah. know, view of the sport, right? And it's like, there's, there's even that kind of stereotype of, you know, swimmers are uncoordinated, like swimmers are not. Right kind of like athletes out of the water and I think the more you get away from that you know and and you kind of get rid of that mindset it's going to have a big impact on performance in the water for sure I mean speaking to that trend is there anything that you feel like you've implemented in the past few years that's that's kind of come from you know improvements in terms of coaching philosophy training I mean dietary is probably a big thing strength and conditioning is a big thing and you've been here how many years how many years have you been here now (laughs) I stopped I stopped counting I think (laughs) I think I think this is season 14 I think um so it's been a while I think it was five five five's an assistant I think it was my ninth as head coach now so since I thought about like 10 maybe yeah it's it's a little bit longer I, I moved here when my my oldest was one um and she's 14 so this yeah this so this will be I think my 14th season, I think, nice. is, is where and, I'm at And you now. had moved here straight from Mecklenburg? Yeah, right, didn't you? yeah. yeah, straight from Mac. It was, it was a unique opportunity. Former assistant was here, or was there, and, and came here as an assistant. Um, and, and while I was working with your dad, Dave, you know, I, I, yep. I had applied to get back into college coaching, and I just wasn't, I wasn't getting any phone calls, anything back. And I, I went home that night, and I told my wife, I'm like, hey, I think I'm going to be a club coach for the rest of my life. Like, it's cool. I'm happy. I, I enjoy what I'm doing. It's, everything's good. She's like, all right, I mean, that's, that's fine. You know, we, we can make it work, whatever. And then literally that next day, the, the assistant called me and I, I shared that story with him and there's just awkward silence on the phone. And he goes, well, that's a shame because I wanted to talk to you about an opportunity down here at LSU. <laughs> and I was just like, oh man. All right. And, yeah. and it was, you know, it was a situation in Harrison where like, I had a great relationship with your dad and I still have a great relationship with your yeah. dad. And it was, it was late in the summer. Um, you know, it was, I think we were already in August. It, it was either late July or early August. Um, and I flew down. I flew down to Baton Rouge, and I interviewed, and, and I loved it. Um, and we were on one of our two week breaks that we got at Mac. Right. And, and I was at August, <laughs> probably sometime. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was in Myrtle Beach on, on vacation, yeah. and, and LSU called, and they offered me a position. I'm like, I got to make the hardest phone call of my life right now. Oh yeah. You know, and, and, and I and I called Dave and, and told him, and, and obviously he was supportive and happy for me, and he knew this is something that he wanted to do. And the timing of it was really weird because it, I, I accepted I accepted the, the the assistant position here right before Hurricane Katrina. Okay. Oh wow. Um, so I was literally in, in, in my house in Charlotte, and, and, and the boxes were packed, and we still had cable, and we had on the Weather Channel and CNN, and we just saw everything happening. Um, you know, so we were we were looking at housing before had, and there are plenty of options. And, and literally the day after Katrina. I got on Realtor.com and, and I plugged in what we we're looking for, and the search came up as zero. So I like changed things around, took it from you know two bath to one bath, zero, because everybody from New Orleans basically came to Baton Rouge and just they gobbled up everything. Oh wow! I mean, there there are literally stories where, where people were knocking on doors with certified checks saying, "I I will buy your property." Just it, it was because everybody lost everything there. Yeah. Um, you know, so I got delayed moving down here and, and, and again, I was, I, I called your dad. I'm like, Hey, I'm still here. Like if you need help and I didn't hire anybody, I can still be on deck. So yeah. I absolutely do it. And, and I, I remember 
again, it was that it was that week after, and, and your mom came in, and like she was just crying and, and just looking. She goes, "You don't like you know you don't have to go. Like you don't like I think everybody was worried about like we just and that's what and that's what your your family was and your like we just, Mecklenburg was a family there. Yeah, you know? oh for and, sure. And I, think yeah. I think that's the coaching world in general. I think any staff you go to, there's there's that family atmosphere. And especially just, then, that was a pretty close knit group. Exactly, I think, yeah. and I think so. Every they you know the Gibsons were just looking out for the guyers in that situation. They knew we had the the one year old you know and is moving to this 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 state of unknown of, of what we're moving into and you know she was just like you just you don't have to go you don't have to go and I said no nah, like it's gonna be all right we're gonna make it work and and, and you know good little willing it, it, it did and, and you know there's been then obviously more opportunities that popped up for me here which is which yeah. has been great you know I never never would have thought it this way um, yeah. but this is this is what it is and um, yeah sometimes things you know come from unexpected places absolutely, or unexpected definitely. path yeah absolutely absolutely so. um so I, I think then I, that's leads me into sometimes i can ask how's that transition been from going from more like club swimming into college swimming because you kind of started you're doing you know what you're kind of like high school age or yeah, earlier high school age there right with that yeah my, that my, group. my coaching path so before i went to mac i was, I was working in division two school um when, okay. I was, when i was getting my okay. master's i had that i had that college environment a little bit um and then and then i went to mac and and um you know i was working with with that senior group, you know, helping Dave out a little yeah. bit with that, with that really, t that really talented core. There was a lot of talent, you know, in that cause group, that was, yeah. that was Ricky Barons. That was the Patton brothers. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, I mean, there was some quality people there. Um, definitely had some big programs out of that group. Abso absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so there, that was fun to work with. And then I was working with that 13, 14 developmental group. Yeah. And then that other, it was senior yellow, I think is what it was called. And that was sort of mm -hmm. like that that step up into that senior sort of get that sectional level. So I was spread out among yeah. all types of quality. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, you know, when I, when I came here as an assistant, I, I actually think it helped me out a lot, um, you know, because there was that, that ability to, to, to focus on technique that I needed to with that developmental group. Um, the, the energy, uh, and, and I and I talk to our club coaches here about it all the time, like that energy, like with that senior green group, where it was yeah. literally kids that were 13, 14, just getting into round, year round swimming. They knew all four strokes and that was about it. But you had kids that were literally they just knew all four strokes and your kids that went in the program for a year. So like it was like conducting an orchestra. I had I had, I had five five lanes if I was lucky oh. when lessons were done, maybe I'd get six. But I had. 42 kids in the water that pool get would get packed there. you know yeah. so it was just it was just running up and down those five or six lanes whether it was you know different intervals or different numbers of repeats you just you made the orchestra happen and yep. you just had that energy on deck and, and i think when you transition into, the, into that college atmosphere i think obviously that training environment is a little more tight um but right. it, it gave me that ability to, to to figure out how to be creative within training as well yeah um so i you know, and, and then every year it was just it was just learning and learning and learning and growing. I, I think the, the biggest adaptation, obviously, was going from that assistant role to the head coaching role. Um, and, and I'll never forget that first time, our first dual meet that we had here at home. And, you know, the meet was going, we're swimming well, and, and no one was talking to me. None of the athletes were talking to me. And as an assistant, they would always come up to me and ask for race feedback. How was that? What did you think? And I became head coach and it was just like, no one was talking to me. And I literally, one of the girls walked by and I just grabbed her by the arm. I said, you can still talk to me about <laughs> feedback. She's like, well, I just didn't know, like you're the head coach now. I'm like, I'm still, like, I'm still Dave. Like I'm yeah, still Dave. Yeah. Like this is, this is still what we need to do. Like, it, you know, if, if I'm working with you primarily, like you got to talk to me about race. Yeah. Like that was a big step. And that first year was just like, and, and I joke with any first year head coach that I see, it's like drinking from a fire hydrant. Like everything just comes at you so fast. And, and, and you get through that season and you, and you think, things go well and performances are good and then you take a step back and you look and you're like there's so much within this culture of the program that you want to change for sure and yeah. year in year two was so much harder yeah. than year one that's so interesting that you actually mentioned that i feel like i you, you just put it well because i've actually i i feel like i've had thoughts around this where, where it's you watch football you watch basketball and this head coach is just this like massive figure like right. you see pat riley walking the the side of a, a yeah. basketball arena or you you see you Bill know Bill belichick or you know some big time oh yeah you know greg popovich and you you never coach, really see yeah. like a football player yeah. coming up right. to them but switch switch that into swimming you know, club swimming level, somebody wins nationals, they run right up to their club Absolutely. coach and they're breaking down yeah. the race, they're doing all this stuff, they're talking about when they're going to Worlds or Juniors or whatever. Then when you come to college, I, I felt it when I was coming in as a freshman, it was like, this kind of feels like it should be televised if it isn't already. Right. And the head coach kind of feels like, you know, this is a, oh, he has a winning record, he has this and that, like all the announcers are actually talking about it. I, I, 
I wonder if it's something more psychological on the swimmer's side, because it's obviously, it's very clear that, you know, you're not going to be carrying yourself any differently right. the day of a dual meet outside of any other day, right? You're trying to improve a swimmer, you're trying to work on technique or whatever, um, whether it's, you know, SECs or just a random dual meet in the middle of the season, you're probably just, you know, looking to improve everybody. Absolutely. And it's, Absolutely. it's such an interesting, I don't know, I've just never really like actually had it put out that way because right. I, I feel like swimming differs in so many unique ways from other big sports and in a way it's a good thing and in another way it kind of it kind of affects people's thought of our of our sport um i wonder if like having a having like that massive figure of the head coach of lsu you know you see him on on uh, sec network during the sec championships that kind of stuff right. if, if that actually would affect yeah. like perception of teams and stuff yeah i don't know i mean i i definitely come from a very different you know set of experience or background having parents that are coaches right yeah so i mean for me I've never really felt that way, right? And so I think if I was, you know, in an environment where, you know, a, a coach was less approachable, you know, they're not like what you're saying, Dave, where you don't want to have, you know, a, a different relationship with the swimmers, that would be, you know, definitely something that was, you know, different. That, yeah. that would take getting used to. So I think it is interesting how it's like you you just switch a job title and there's like a veil that kind of like right. gets drawn and it's almost like, oh, well now you know, I have to like walk on eggshells more when it's really, it's the same person. Yeah, and, that, and that's like, that, that was the crazy, it, it's not like I went somewhere else to become the head coach yeah. and they didn't know who I was and they were just trying to figure You've me out. You've seen them I every day for for, 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 for some of them, yeah. I'd worked with them for three years. You know, yeah. they, were, they were seniors and I worked with them for three years and it, all of a sudden it was like, and, and day to day everything was the same, but then that meet came and it was just like, I'm not gonna talk to Dave. <laughs> like I, I literally was like, I was, I was standing there just looking around like, yeah. So lonely. Like, what the hell's going I on am here? so. <laughs> did I do something wrong? Do I smell? Did What's I going something? on? And then like, and like I said, I just I grabbed that one. She's like, well, we just I didn't I didn't know like you're the head coach. I'm like, no, like I don't. There's no ego from like, and that's and I think other other subject other topic like one of the things with myself and and I think our staff there's there's no egos on our pool deck like it's it's not about a title for us. It's not about head coach or associate head coach or assistant coach. It's it's really about just doing what's in best interest for these kids on the pool deck. Yeah. And, and that's, and, and, and you can't have, you can't, there can't be egos on deck. Yeah. When, when that's, when that's the ultimate goal. And I think that's the one thing with our swimming staff here. I think we're all on board with that where there is, there is no egos. The success of an individual athlete or, or, or athletes isn't put on the shoulders of a coach or a head coach. It is for our program. It is for Louisiana state university. And, and my assistants have a, a good grasp of that really well, I think. Yeah, I feel like that's something that you actually touched on. I mean, you come in from this assistant coaching role to the head coaching role, regardless of if you're change any, changing anything from a training standpoint, what do you think about the culture? And are you coming in thinking like, oh, you know, I wanna do this and this and this because I think this helped a lot as an athlete, or is it just a matter of, are you letting them figure it out? Are you trying to implement something? Like, I mean, culture's a vague word. Right. How much, I guess, how much do you kind of try to institute that versus kind of let it develop organically? Yeah. <laughs> I spent, and, and this is one of the conversations that I've had with, with, with one of my friends, Matt Leach, just became the head coach at Washington State, um, about, about culture and, and, and how you change things. And, and like you said, culture is culture's a big word. And, and, and at LSU, we, yeah. we, we, had, we had to change the culture of a program from, from what we're doing outside of the pool. Um, I'll leave it vague like that. Uh, and, and it's one of those things where those first, you know, on the women's side, I, th I think that culture shift, that culture change happened faster. And I think that's just, it's a maturity thing. Mm -hmm. Nothing against males, nothing against guys. I think they're just women grasp on a bigger picture type thing. So I went the, to an all, all boys high school. I, yeah, I can, you know, uh, no, so, I, so, I, so the women, so the, 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 the women took four years. I, I think the men took an extra year to figure that out. And, and I think in, yeah. in hindsight, I think some of that was, you know, as an assistant, I, I had, obviously I had a role in recruiting, but I, I didn't have the final say in terms of offers and scholarships. And, and when you're looking at character and speed and stuff like that, you know, so when, when I came in and said, this is, this is my job, this is what the athletic director told me that we need to be doing here in terms of changing our culture. This is, this is what happens anymore, A, B, C, and D. This is what doesn't happen anymore, E, F, and G. There are some people that they literally didn't sign up for that. And, and so I was put in that position of like, all right, do I just non-renew and cut everybody off and start fresh or do I see who wants to try to buy into something bigger something greater and really develop holistically as a student athlete and, and change your experience here um, I went with the latter I, I, I don't because of my personality I, I don't think I would go back and change it I think I think cutting off and, and, and giving opportunities for people to change isn't really who I am um, 
but I think that delayed that process for us, if you yeah. know what I mean. I, I, think, yeah. I think there were there were some people that were just, they came here because of what they wanted to do, and for four years they were going to do that, and that never were going to change. And, and so when you have one of those one of those on the team, and I, and I had a talk with an athlete one time about this too, like culture is so hard to change because if you have one that isn't bought in, they're going to find yeah. that weakest one. Yeah. And then, and then there's two. They'll make a crowd. And then, and then the next year, those two might grab another two, or maybe they'll get four. And then it's, and then so you got to always manage that culture a little bit. So, so during that time, it was, it was always hard to do that. And, and, and you know, so for where we're at as a program, that I feel is like, all right, so we've we've made this culture team. I, I think we're, I think we are a great program in terms of who we represent and how we represent this institution. The next step is now obviously raising the level of competition. Our, our competitiveness as a yeah. program within yeah. the SEC, and, and 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 you guys know this being from Florida. I mean, this is this is a beast of a conference for sure. Oh yeah, you, know, you can you you literally you literally can be last at SECs and you can be top twenty in the country. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can make NCAA's from you know the B the, final the at B SEC final. championships. Yeah. You, you have an you have an off swim. You can do it from the C. It's it's yeah. it's, it's crazy yeah, how it's like how, that in every sport, right? Yeah. It's swimming, you know, football, basketball, it's, it's it, everything. It, it's, yeah. it's crazy the depth of that. So it's it's for me, it's an opportunity. Like you know, I think it was two seasons ago or three seasons ago. I, I felt our men had this phenomenal year. I mean, broke so many school records. We, we sent some relays and two A's, individual qualifiers. You know, one of our guys just a little bit, a little bit off of making two A finals. Like kind of disappointing. It was like we did, we did all this great. It was like we're still last at SECs. Yeah. And like, and you looked at NCAA ranks. Like oh, we didn't, we didn't really change much. And it's like so, I, I was always looking outside of the program. Like oh, we're just not making the steps. Not, and, and, I, and I've learned that I to to really gauge our success a little bit, I got to look internally first. Yeah. And, and let our kids know, like, hey, we did have a lot of these successes. We've had 37 new all-time top 10 times. We had, you know, these, this amount of school records broken. This, like, different monuments like that that, that they should yeah. take pride in, but also lay out the reality of where it's at. Like, yeah. that's, that's, that's one step, f- and, that, and that's how I felt that year. I, I felt we took two steps forward as a men's team, but I think all the other people above us took three. And it's like, we're still behind. We're still so it's just yeah. always well, that, it's I think always that, gets that to battle. Some of that other stuff you you were talking about earlier, right? Like you know, even just what you're doing, like with the dryland and white room stuff, you know, competition. Right. You know, you're kind of keeping them engaged, going against each other, yeah. and that's like gets to that culture. You know, if even if you know you're still not seeing necessarily the external progress as much, you know, when you have that internal progress, you're going to have more competition in yep. the pool, and then that's going to lead to better competition when you go and you compete against other teams. I mean, in the in the end of the day, I feel like it builds on itself. Swimming is one of those things, especially at a Division One level. It's you should be signing up for maturity, mm-hmm. right? Club swimming. There's the question of maturity, immaturity. You can you, you know carry yourself however you want in club swimming your results are gonna reflect on that. But once you come into the collegiate uh, realm and you're being recruited and you're doing all that kind of stuff, you're representing the school, you're representing the coach, you're representing- Something bigger. Yeah. yeah. And, Something bigger. And like you said, you're representing the culture of the team. And if you're kind of this small little pariah over here and you're not taking it with maturity and all that kind of stuff, then it can either trickle outwards or it can badly reflect you. So I think it sounds like, and it looks like you made the great choice with that because it was right. kind of, it sounds like it was more of like a long-term choice versus a short-term choice, right? Short-term was trying to please the people that were already there and committed right. to it. And then long-term was, this is a powerhouse. Like, let's right. do this. Let this, you know, we're going to be there. Right. Um, that's what it looks like it, you've done. Right. I mean, <laughs> you got a beautiful pool, you know, the team's freaking going crazy every morning. Right. Um, we got to sit in on a practice this morning. It was really cool. You guys doing power stuff. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of power. It, Back to back to training mode, I guess. Yeah. I think I think anytime we come out of the weight room, um, we try to be explosive. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things we we, we played with this summer, and, and I saw it on one one of the swimming websites. I, I think you know, working on that middle 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 speed of races a little bit. And I think the set was like it was just you know something simple, 12 fifties on on two minutes, trying to match your middle one hundred speeds, that middle fifty. So after the dive, that twenty five to seventy five mark, just trying to match that speed. So it, so. I like Monday, that a lot. Monday afternoons, we, we go into the weight room. We're, we're not heavy, we're light, we're explosive. We're, we're getting basically their, their whole nervous system just sort of ready to react in the water a little bit. And then we come in, we have this set warm up. And this summer, we just, we just did it all based off of people's hundreds. Um, and the one change we made this year is, is we have people focusing on the 100 and they're doing 50s on two minutes. We have people focusing on the 200 and they're going 75s. And then our 500 people, they're going 125s, all on all on the same interval. Yeah. But you know, so the 125s, they're just they're just trying to match their, you know, basically that, take that times four, trying to hit your goal time. So it's it's not, I wouldn't say it's as it's intense, but in terms of in, in terms of what they're putting out body wise, it's not as intense. I think is that speed that you're seeing from, 
you know, right. our, our backstroker that wants to go 45 this year, you know, he's, he's going 22s push to the feet repeat on two minutes. Like it's just, it's that intense, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and so you guys saw this morning, heavier weight room, bigger power focus. Um, and that was, that was across the board. You know, we had, we had our, our lower end group doing a little circuit, a bunch of different exercises, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, I had that, the, the, the group I was working with, that was on the buckets. Um, they do have hundreds within their regimen. So they're doing more of a, a pure power type base on the bucket of just some really short, powerful, explosive stuff. And then throwing some gear on and they're just going fast. Um, our more 200 type focus, they had shoots on. So, um, you know, called power endurance. And, and, and I took that, I got Jake Schellenberger, who works at Liberty University, he wrote a whole book on power bucket, on, on, on power towers, and, it, and it's great. Um, and I know Jake personally, so it's, it's a good book. So he calls that power endurance. And then like our distance, like their distance guys, I, I called it power endurance plus. So it was just a little bit, mm-hmm. a little bit longer with the shoots, but they're still getting that yeah. resisted feel. And then and, and, and like you talked about earlier on, when you look at guys, it doesn't matter if they're in the 50 or the mile, they're just bigger. They're just, they're just stronger. And, and so you have to find that way to incorporate that, I think not only in what you're doing in dryland, but in the water. Yeah. Um, you know, so those, 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 those tools, the equipment you have to find resistance like that are, are, are huge. Yeah. I mean, not to make any generalization, but it sounds like you, you, you definitely put a lot of importance on quality. Absolutely. Right? How much quantity are you normally doing? We are, we are, I, I tell all our recruits this, we're definitely, definitely quality over quantity by far. I like that. Um, there, 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 there's, there's times for work, yeah. you know, with, without a doubt, there, there's times where we're going to push yardage. Obviously your distance people, they're going to have to push a little more yardage. Right. I, I think, you know, our, our, our middle, our middle group, and, and like I explained earlier this morning, you know, our, our middle group for most of them, like their, their primary events are 200. Most of them go down to a hundred or, or maybe have a second 200. I, I think they're going to be within a workout, you know, through the season, anywhere between 55 and 7,000. Um, that's nice. You know, and, and it's, you know, it, it gives us that ability to, to take our time and to really focus on technique and focus on the quality aspects of things. I, I think, you know, our, our lower end where it's their primary events, a hundred and, and maybe the 50 or multiple hundreds, they're going to obviously going to be 10, 15% behind that. But there's days where they go 6,000, 6,500, because you just still need to get that volume in and that aerobic base, because that is a component in all the races. Of course. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's, and it's, it gives you that kind of capability right. to handle some of the more, yeah. you know, different types of training right. that you're doing to have that base. But we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not doing, and I don't want to say stereotyping, but we're just not doing the traditional, it's not even traditional. We're, we're not going eight, eight hundreds. We're not doing six, yeah. six hundreds. We're not doing that type of stuff. I think, you know, especially early on in the season, if, if you're just looking for fitness ideas, there's so many other ways you can do that besides going up and down a black line. Oh yes. And, and that's like, and, and that was, and that was part of the, the, the circuit that we talked about. It was, it was fitness based. We got, we got spin bikes at the pool. We, in the past we've, and that's transitions of, of finding different athletes in the past. We've run a lot. I've, I've, I've either I've recruited non runners or people have just gotten bad at running. We don't do it as much anymore. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's like you do it twice. Like, Oh, I can't walk. My shins are shot. But you know, so there's, there's so many different ways to work yeah. fitness into things than just going up and you, to build some creativity into yeah, your, it's, your it's, kind of aerobic you guys, you fitness guys, base. You guys know it. It's a, it's a long season. Oh yeah. It's a long season. So if, if early on in the season, you can find ways to not be in the water, that, that are going to, they're going to make you more hungry at the end of the year to be in the water. Yeah. By all means, you got to do it. if you're swimming long course or trying to do any sort of international meets, yep. you know, national meets in the summer, it's year really round. a year round yeah, you know is. there is no end to the there season is, really no you end. have like you're saying earlier, like two weeks you know maybe you yep. take off yep. yeah um and uh, you mentioned something that i was wanting to ask about i think you know people that I, I know from our youtube channel that you know our frequent viewers you know might be the people who are in high school and so i, I just wanted to get into a little bit about some sort of recruiting stuff like kind of what you would, might look for or what kind of role that takes in you know or what you look for <laughs> as part of the role in developing right. that kind of vague culture right yeah you know um, Cause that obviously has a, that's a big component of it, right? The people you bring in are absolutely, gonna be the foundation of that. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, in, in terms of recruiting, and in, in recruiting has changed greatly over the past year, as, as I'm sure you guys know with, with junior contacts and early commitments. Yeah. And, all that weird stuff and, and new NC2 like and rules. And, when and I was not, recruited, and I, it was, you know, I think, what, July 1? July 1 of your senior year. Yeah. Make, and we still have that restriction, but now it's like you can text juniors and, and then juniors can call you. And now we can bring juniors in for official visits. And it's like, you know, I was at our, our, our SEC conference meeting for all head coaches as swimmers. And it's just like, you know, we realize we're bringing like 15, 16 year old kids onto campus now. Yeah. And maturity like, level is the so maturity level and then how do you work that with 
a 19 year old being a right. hoax, like you're working with like it's just a hold in like different dynamic yeah and, and and the compliance guy that that oversees swimming at the sec he just and he's a lawyer he kind of looked he's like hmm <laughs> i'm gonna have to think about some of this a little bit and, yeah. and obviously it's just it's it's management like and, and and making sure you're obviously doing things right but i mean it's just recruiting has changed so much i think some of the stuff i like to do personally is is i think you know, you go to a junior nationals, you go to a sectional meet, everybody's rested and, and people swim fast. Everybody can look good in a suit, I think. Um, I think, you know, for me, once, especially with the early commitment stuff, if, if we have juniors that are looking to commit, and I did this with, I think, everybody that committed earlier on our side, like, I, I got to go to a club workout. Like, I need to yeah. see you in training mode. I need to see you interacting with your teammates. I need to see you interacting with your coach. You know, I, I, I look sort of holistically about who what are you are. like when you just showed up from school right 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 yeah. yeah that that type of stuff you know attitude just behavior different things like that and then like even even at a, at a meet like you know say i'm at a junior nationals it's like and they're seated well or they just have a bad swim i'm gonna i'm gonna follow that kid with my eyes down the deck see how they interact with the coach what they do in the warm down where are they are they taking off their goggles are they throwing their cap are they yelling like someone does that it's i'm just drawing a line through them i'm done like i'm not i'm not going to put up with that for four years you yeah know, obviously obviously you had the talent to to qualify for a certain meet and swim at this level of a meet so the talent's there but you know something goes negative and you're just you're just going to turn like that that's just that's a, that's a huge turnoff for me as a coach and, that, and that's and that's the stuff with the culture stuff that you brought up that i try to do and look at a little bit more i've done i've done things where i'll know a kid is at practice and i'll call their home number to purposely talk to the parents. Oh wow! Just just to get a gauge of, of what what I'm getting from a family, yeah, and, and yeah. sort of see how their approach is in terms yeah. of the recruiting and through that process. I it, and having done some club coaching, I would guess you know parents are definitely you know they have a big impact, right? There's right. a big there's a big role that they play there, and you know, getting them to practice when you're in high school, and you know, when something's going wrong, you know, is it mom and dad that's coming right. and talking to the coach? Is it the the kid that's coming and talking to them? You know, there's a lot that goes in there. So that's interesting. You mentioned that. Absolutely. And, and then I think, you know, to, to the club coach side of things is I'll, I'll usually wait until after we get a commitment. I don't know why I do this. I, I, I'll wait until after we get the commitment. I'll, if I don't hear from the club coach before that, I'll reach out to the club coach about thing then the, them for supporting through the recruiting process and then just ask like, so what, what are the biggest areas for this person improving? Where, where, are their, where are their strengths, where are their weaknesses? How did you rest them? Ask yeah. those type of questions just, just to, and, and everything's gonna be different because when they're 15, 16, 17, and then all of a sudden they're 18, 19, 20, especially on the men's side, you're growing into a man, things will change a little, but it's, it's, but it's good to get that idea of- The context of what, right. what, what they've been doing right, that right, led right. them you to know, that point like, that you like wanted to recruit They're, they're tapered. Did they just swim easy for three weeks or did they, you know, they keep up their intensity? What well, was it? Just yeah. so you can try to gauge because if you try to do something different, and you guys know this as swimmers as well, like buy-in is 90% yeah. of it. Buy-in is 90%. So for if you sure. do something different and they're not bought into it, whether it's working for them physiologically or not, they're just they're going to say they don't feel good yeah and, and then you always have the ones that's they're going to say they don't feel good for seven days and all of a sudden two days before the meet like oh i feel great today <laughs> yeah. nothing's changed except up in your head i would have been on maybe a little closer <laughs> to one of those get that extra couple oh. of days rest even if it didn't right. physiologically make a difference right i yeah. felt like I, I should be ready to go yeah. we, were, we were talking to maxime rooney yeah. from from uf and um to towards like the athlete perspective of that which i think is really interesting and he got into it is like um, the perception of athletes coming into a college program, you know, a lot of it's like, oh my God, this is college. Like everything's going to change. Right. And he said that it took him a year or two to kind of get to the point where it was like, my success before college is exactly what got me here. Right. So why am I going to get to college and change everything? Why don't I just do what I was doing before? Um, and obviously part of that is commit to the program, do everything that you're told to, you know, nobody's has it out right. for you. Everybody's in your best interest. Absolutely. Um, but at the same time, you know, don't psych yourself out. Oh, I need to do this and this and right. this. Like, do what you're told, do all of your workouts, right? You're obviously gonna be ramping things up. A lot of people add strength and conditioning, a lot of people add a little bit more yardage in college, but it's just a matter of, like you said, commit to it, buy into it, and that's, you know, 90% of it. Yeah, I always, I always joke with the whole buy-in thing, I always joke, I, I would love, I would love to start off a season where, where literally myself and, and, and my staff, we, we come on the pool deck, and we just spread out to different corners, and we just tell the team, go where you want. Oh, wow. Pick your that would coach. be strong. Pick that would your, be very strong. Your, and, and I feel like, 
I feel confident enough where where I think you know unless a coach has 40 athletes that, that I think they can manage that regardless if it's if it's a 50 freestyler or, and maybe even a miler in that group I think they can manage it within the lane space we have here to do that definitely but that's that whole buy-in perspective yeah. you know it's it, and it's just, and again it's just getting creative there's there's a year and it was before my assistant Steve came in halfway through the year you know my my assistant left became Chris it became the head coach at Brown um, you know, and it was, it was late school had already started. I was going to junior pan packs when our girls made it. So like the hiring process was just, was done. There was really nothing there. And so I took my group and his group and combined it. So I, I took our sprinters and then I took, so like I said, some of that middle group where people were 200, hundred focused. And I just, I sat them down. I said, cause they had this look of fear and like, oh my gosh, it's, it's the mid distance coach or the distant coaches yeah. coaching the sprinters. Like, listen, I've, I've done this before. I've, I've been on the pool deck for years now. Like here's how we're going to do it. Like there's going to be group A, group B and group C. And there's going to be some days where A is by themselves, B by themselves, C. There's going to be some days where it's A and B, some days where it's B and C. Some like, we're just going to make this work. And they just looked at me like, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. And then they, and it was good. And they bought in. And it's just, like I said, it's, it's just up to that coach then to, to get creative within that training. Yeah. And like I taught, and that was like the, like we talked about the club stuff. Like it's just, it's your orchestra. Oh yeah. Yeah. You just have to run your orchestra every day for the, that two hours on deck or two and a half hours on deck, whatever it is. It's, you got to be creative and, and keep that flow going. Uh -huh. And you know what I think is really interesting when you have this finely tuned orchestra, I can give an example from my time at UF was uh, Coach Troy always did something called the Chinese buffet set. And it would be basically a paper practice, right. right? Coaches are just on the deck, you know, chatting, just enjoying, enjoying being on deck. And you have this practice where there's a bunch of options that right. are one point, bunch of options that are two yep. point, bunch of options that are three points. I've done that. And the distance swimmers are, everybody's allowed to pick as many as they want, right. but you have to meet that many points. Right. You know, sprinters need three points, distance swimmers need six points. And just culturally, you can see the distance swimmers are gonna be like, yeah, uh, we did a lot of kick yesterday, so I'm actually gonna throw down like, you know, the four 400s right. pull, and I'm gonna get three points on that. Whereas the sprinters are like, my starts have been pretty slow. I'm gonna do a few right. one pointers, get some starts, get some breakouts, get some underwaters. It's a, ta it's a taper practice right there. Hey, right? I would love it. I would love it. I, I, I would jump in there right now doing that. But that, I think that's a good example of like the orchestra running even on its own. Like the coaches have instilled it. Yep. They've, you know, the intelligence is within the swimmer. It's not a necessarily the whole follow and lead thing. And it's more of just like, I know what I need. Right. Whether I like it or not, I was a distance swimmer. I did not like a lot of the things that I did, but I knew I needed it. Right. right? I knew if I was tapering um, while some guys like probably Harry when he was doing breaststroke taper, um, you know, got to hang out and do a few right. 25s, do, Give do me a some few 50s. 50s Fast. pace, yeah. right. 25 sprint. Yeah. Whereas yeah. I'm getting ready for the mile and I'm like, <laughs> if I wasn't doing, you know, hundreds pace, I'd be like, man, I'm gassed. Like, right. I don't know if I can get through a mile. Right. Yeah. And like you said, it's, it's about, it's about culture. It's about environment. And I think, you know, especially, the, and, we, and we always try to have that environment on deck all the time. And that's, it's one of the challenges I put forward to the, to the, to our team this week is, is I called it sauce week. And, and there's a sauce. video, I don't know if you guys have seen it. There, there's a video of this guy from Best Buy. Okay. And he talks. He talks about the difference between juice and sauce. I have seen that video. And, and, yeah. and like I've, I've seen yeah. it, and I and I yeah. broke I broke it out this summer. What for one workout of like we just we need like juice is temporary. Sauce sauce need the sauce. sauce sticks <laughs> sauce sticks. Like any any dog like like, you know, think about a a, a a a jar of I forget what simply made lemonade. Like how how long does that last in your fridge? A few days maybe. And he's like, what about barbecue sauce? And he's like, oh man, it's forever. He goes, sauce sticks. And so like, so we had a workout, we had a workout this summer. Like, like we just, we got to bring the sauce. Like we yeah. got to put the work in, yeah. we got to put the energy where it's just, it's just going to stick. And, and that was, and that's been the challenge for this week. And I keep putting it on my Instagram. I, I found the video and I keep like putting like it, that. putting it back out there for them to see. And I'll put like little quotes in our group me from that little video thing of like, just of bringing the sauce. And I think it's, it's one of those things where as a staff, we, we manage where, where we know where they might be tapped physically, emotionally this week where we have to bring that sauce for them. We have to bring that excitement and that energy. Right. But we can't do that every day either. And that's what you talked about too, in terms of picking what's right for you. Like they gotta be able to bring that sauce as well. It's gotta and be more self-sustaining. It's, 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 yeah. that, it's that balance of things. And I, like, I think yesterday morning, at least the group that we did, we did, ended up being like 15, 100s whole best average with a little bit of swimming between each five. Like, the, you know, for a six o'clock in the morning type swim, that's, that's hard mentally. So there was, sure. it was the staff that brought the sauce on that one, I think what you guys saw today, I think the kids had, they, I think they brought the sauce Oh yeah, today. they were pumping. They, 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 were... they had that energy, that, yeah. they had the excitement. And it's just, and it's one of those things as a coach, you just, you gotta gauge it every day of, of who, who you need to be that day and how you're, gonna, how you're gonna bring it, you know, for your athletes a little bit, but it's just. That's again like that orchestra, right? You know, exactly. you might show up one day and the, you know, whatever section of the orchestra needs a little more. Right. 
you know, they yep. need a push to, to get the right amount of energy and the right amount of, right. you know, effort out of it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's a good, that's yeah. a very good analogy. And then, and then, so I talked to them yesterday about before we did that whole best average set, I said, you know, I pulled, I pulled my group out, our group out, and I just said, look, I'm not, we're not trying to bury you. We're not trying to push you off the edge of a cliff this week. I said, our goal is, is, is we're, we're trying to push you to the edge. I said, but when you feel like you're about to fall off, I said, you guys got to push back on me as hard as you can. Push back on the set as hard as you can. And, 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 and so, like, they had that. We brought the sauce yesterday morning in, in terms of the staff, and, and then we came back. We did a, a, a good 200 pace set yesterday afternoon. They're going, you know, 50 from a dive to the feet, 200 pace, 100 heart rate, 28, and then a 50 pace push, and then 225s max. Like, it was four rounds of that, just, just intense. And, after round two, I, I saw them starting to fade. I'm like, all right, I'm not going to bring the sauce. I'm just going to see what they can do here. I said, all right. Yeah. I said, round three, it's time for you guys to push back. Yeah. I said, We're, you're, you're, you're at that edge. I said, I need you to you just, just push back. Let them challenge each other. And then, exactly, then the energy, the energy from them started to pick up. And it was, it's just, it's, it's good. It was just, it's good. It's, it is nice, right, when you're yeah. having done some coaching, now when you, you get a set or a group where they kind of bring the energy to you. Right. You right. don't have to Absolutely. always be. That feels great as a coach as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think a lot of swimmers who've never been on that other side of that, you know, wouldn't necessarily understand that dynamic as well. That, you know, there's there's energy to be gained and, you know, something to be gained from the coach's side as well. So that's that can be pretty rewarding. As much as much as, as much as we can give it to the athletes, the athletes can yeah. give it back to us as oh, well, yeah. because there, there's there's going to be days where it's, we're just everybody's tired. Yeah. And, and you got to, yeah. you got to feed off of each other to, to make it work. Yeah. I think swimmers don't get that a lot. Right. And, you know, there's always going to be a day when you don't want to get up for morning practice right. and come into the pool, but you know, like any other, you know, sort of work or job you have a coach, there's going to be days where you might not want to get up or you might not want to, you know, move some lane lines or something, you know, like if you're a club coach or, you know, have to deal with getting your 20 kids into three lanes and when the, the group, you know the swimmers bring that energy that that's a that's a big positive that helps and that feeds back and that helps you give them the energy yeah it's a good dynamic so i guess yeah, right we'll, we'll wrap it up a little bit but i'll kind of give you an opportunity someone who's listening who wants to swim in a division one level right they right. want to be they want to be peak of the peak and they're considering lsu they want right. to be a tiger what do you normally go about telling them <laughs> um and and obviously there's a lot of bona fides right um, and there's a lot of luster that can bring them to the program, right. but face value just right. I, I think I think from a from a program, and this is what I say on the phone. This is what I say to, to parents to their face and kids to their face. Like, I th I think we we specialize our training a ton for athletes. Some, sometimes I think it's too much, but then I look at some of the success we've had, and, and we talked about the buy-in and the ones that have been fully bought in for for four years or e even three. I, I think freshman years. It's it's a it's a coin toss on what happens freshman year. It's an there's, adjustment there, there, period. There's so many lot. there's so many things. If if it, oh yeah, the kid swims faster their freshman year, then you got to worry about the sophomore slot. If they <laughs> match if, if if they match their best times their freshman year, that's a win for me. Yeah, you know. So so if they're bought in for those three or four years, like I said, for those that we specialize with, there's we've had some really some really successful swimmers over the past eight years here. Yep. You know, um, mm -hmm. and so I I think that's that's the one thing that I have. I think you know when 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 holistically looking at LSU, Louisiana, is, it, and you guys are going to drive across and say, Louisiana is a very different state. And, 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 it's, and, and it's, it's one that takes a little bit of adjustment to. And it's, you know, when you look at us geographically, we're really isolated. You know, we're going east, there's nothing. Right? Nope. You, got, you, got, you got Mobile yeah. three, hours, three hours away. Takes you, know, you a little while to get to some head, places. Heading yeah. head west, you got you got Houston four hours away. Anything north from there, I mean, you're six and a half from Dallas. I mean, so we're we're kind of geographically isolated in terms of who we are and where we are. So when we recruit, we recruit everywhere. Yeah. Um, first of all, so it's, it's not that, but it's just I, I think the one thing about LSU is 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 and it and it sounds really cheesy because I get I guess I get asked all the time like so what what's so unique about LSU? What's so special about LSU? And and, and Again, it's, it's generic, but I'm 100% honest with it because I, I sort of experienced it as, as, as coming here from Mecklenburg Aquatic Club is, is from the outside looking in, LSU, is, is, it's really hard to figure out what is so unique about this school because everybody, everybody that's inside LSU is great, LSU is amazing. Yeah. And, then, and then once you're in to try to, to try to put that feeling into words, it's so hard to do. It is, it is, it's just, it's, 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 
you know, there, there's a slogan. It's, it's, it's the pride and passion of the LSU Tigers. And, yeah. that's, and that's what it is. And I think so much of, of that for us in state is, is when you look at a, a state like Florida, you have, in terms of sports in general, you have Miami, you have Florida State, you have UF, you have Central, you have all these, all these schools yeah. there. You look, at, you look at Georgia, you have Georgia, you have Georgia Tech, you look at, you look at Alabama, you have Alabama and Auburn. Yeah. A lot of interstate rivalry and competition. In, in Louisiana, it's it's really just LSU. Yeah. I mean, there's there's other colleges, but this is it. Like this is the Powerhouse. flagship institution. Yeah. So from 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 New Orleans to to Lake Charles, that you'll drive through all the way up to Shreveport and to Baton Rouge, this whole state really does bleed purple and gold. Yeah, and it, and it's and it's one of those things where it's it's just not it's just not for football. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where where our student athletes here at LSU they're good and bad, they're put on a pedestal, um, you know, so there, so there's opportunities that arise from that in terms of job prospectus and alumni connections, stuff like that, that are great. But at the same time, when we talked about, um, you know, culture and, and making bad decisions, it's, it's front page on the student newspaper then, yep. you know, right. but like I said, that, that, that culture and that love for the purple and gold is, is, is amazing here. And it's, yeah. it's so hard to put into words but once you're in it, you just you feel it. And, like LSU is really part of the culture of Louisiana. It, it, it is, and, and and a lot of that a lot of that is based around family, and that's and that's what Louisiana Louisiana culture is based around food and family. And you guys got a taste of that last night. Oh in New yeah, yeah, we, we you did. know, <laughs> and, and, and and I think LSU is the same way, and, I, and and our athletic department has run that way, and our, and our program run that way. It is, it is a family first type feeling, you know, and, and and when you look at the flags that might be seen over my shoulder, like that represents everybody on our team this year. So we have 27, 28 different states or countries represented on our team. The only way you're gonna get them bought in is, is to be a family first. Yeah. And, and, and so that's, that's it, that's, that's my sales pitch, like I said. We are, I we love are, it. We are, we, are, we are definitely, we definitely specialize our training. We're definitely quality over quantity, but yeah. we, are, we are a family and LSU is just, it's a unique place to be and it's it's fun. It is a lot of fun. I think it's very clear speaking from an outsider's perspective that there's this like passion and like fire that you can see on the pool deck from you from right. talking to you that's pretty unique compared to other programs right. compared to other other staff yeah, out just, there. Just my experience, you know, anytime I've been around like LSU, you know, like whether it's a football game or something, there's definitely a lot of passion there. Oh, like yeah. These are very passionate yes. people. Sometimes, about yeah. sometimes, they, sometimes they cross the line a little bit. But that's, <laughs> all right. that's all right. That's all right. We got a live tiger on campus. I mean, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> that, yeah. I, I, did, I did my undergrad uh, in production and I started working camera for a few football games at right. UF. And one time LSU came and there was a tiger on the field right. and I was working camera right next to it and I was like, can I switch end zones? This right. is kind of crazy yeah, over here. They used, they used to roll them out on a cage. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> pretty crazy. Well, if you want to be a tiger, um, we can contact you. What social media accounts? What kind of? I got, I mean, I have my own personal, well, professional, I guess, coaching Twitter and Instagram handle. Um, then LSU Swim Dives are generic. Okay. Broad-based Twitter, Instagram. All our, all our, all our information is online at lsusports.net. So. Awesome. Well, awesome. We'll, we will have that in the show notes. And yeah. We really appreciate you. you taking the time. It was cool to watch you guys at, at work out this morning. And No, thanks for sticking by, swinging by Baton Rouge. It's awesome. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. It was good to see you. And we'll have our eyes on LSU for SECs, NCAAs through the college season. Awesome. Appreciate Definitely. it, guys. Thanks, thanks guys. Dave. All right. Well, that was our interview with uh, Dave Geyer. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any specific questions about it, of course, feel free to comment on any platform that you can find us on. Uh, Ryan, you know, you have any uh, media takeaways from our interview, our, our time with Dave Geyer? Yeah, I'd say the the number one thing that I loved from this interview was his introduction to me of the sauce. Um, I think that's one of the most amazing concepts I've ever heard. And this is something that, honestly, any team out there, whether you're club or college or national, um, bringing this culture, this kind of sauce to your team is such a cool concept because what he's explaining there is, you know, the differing interest levels in your everyday life as a swimmer. Yeah. You know, a lot of people come in and they drone and they moan into practice. Um, us both having coaching experience, yours way more than mine. But uh, you come in and, you know, a lot of the times your swimmers don't even really put off the vibe that they really want to be there. And that's never really fun. So having, and obviously it can also go the other way around. It can be the coaches haven't had a good day and they're just trying to get through the practice, trying to get the work done. Uh, bringing in this concept of the sauce is almost like a, a better communication tool to actually understand and know how your team's going to react to the day. And uh, the way that he explains it, the way that he's implementing it is pretty incredible to me, honestly. Yeah. I mean, one could say he's a sauce boss. <laughs> sauce boss. <laughs>
Um, <laughs> no, I, absolutely. That was something I thought I, I definitely could relate to, right? That That's something particularly going from the, you know, almost directly, right? I had about a year or two gap there where I was kind of in between swimming and coaching as a team manager, but going to, you know, almost directly from that more athlete perspective to the coach perspective, even with my background, you know, um, with, with family that coaches, it's something you don't necessarily think about as a swimmer, right? You know, when you're in the pool, you're kind of just thinking about, oh man, you know, I'm doing these 10, 300s, like this is a lot of effort, you know, I'm, I'm tired, you know, whatever it is that you're, you're bringing to the practice, but coaches have a life too, right? You know, they, they have, their own personal lives going on. They have, you know, the same struggles, right? Those 10 300s, you know, you're swimming them, but the coach is also watching them, right? He's in a, in a way doing them at least mentally with you as well. You know, so when you give off that kind of, you know, attitude of you don't want to be there, or, you know, not bringing energy, that definitely doesn't help your coach either, right? Of course, it's their job and they're professionals, so they're going to do their best regardless. But when you can, as an athlete, bring something to the table that's going to help motivate that coach. It's a really positive feedback cycle there. Yep. And that's something I definitely experienced uh, for myself. You know, there's days I come to the pool, whether I didn't get enough sleep or, you know, stressed over something flex related or stressed over something school related. And when I come and, you know, I'm, I just have a you know, positive, one positive interaction with a kid, right? That, that can really kind of change the whole outlook for the rest of your day. And I think that's something that doesn't get talked about as much as it should. And I'm, I'm really glad Dave got us into that topic of conversation. Yeah. I mean, all joking aside, the idea of the sauce um, really leads into this kind of cultural shift that he's made with this team. And yeah. he obviously spoke about it within the interview, but he's a coach that's driven within a conference that's just so strong. And he's trying to take this team that used to be um, middle of the pack and he's implementing these tools. He's recruiting correctly. He's bringing in the, the secret herbs and spices to the exactly. sauce. Exactly. And he's basically just completely flipped over this culture of the team. And I think it was really interesting that how, how he basically spoke about the recruiting process and how he treats social media and how he's looking at different kids coming in these days. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that's something that a lot of people, you know, potentially, I know we, we look through our, our uh, comments and, you know, we see there's a decent number of you guys that are at that age, you know, your club swimmers at a high school level, or maybe you're even a college swimmer who's looking at, at getting onto a team, right? Maybe like a club swimmer. Um, you know, I think uh, pay attention to some of the stuff he's saying there. Right? Yes. I think that's really relevant information. You know, uh, we've been discussing even maybe having a whole dedicated episode just to our experience. If, if that's something you're interested in, make sure you comment, you know, let us know, because that's definitely something that we all bring yeah. a little bit of a different element to. Right. Yep. Um, you know, myself coming from a background with uh, parents that were coaches, you know, you coming from a fairly well-known, you know, pool and, and team, and you have other high-level swimmers around you, you know, like a Lauren Driscoll, like you've talked about before, um, you know, Marcin and Luke having come from a bit more international backgrounds, or particularly Marcin having never even visited Florida before he came, <laughs> came to school, yeah. right? Um, I think some of the stuff he talked about is really pertinent for the younger viewers, especially, right, right, uh, like around social media, you know, that that's something they are starting to take into account when they look at somebody who's going to come to the team, you know, if you want somebody that brings that positive sauce, that's something you can, to some extent, uh, gauge through their social media interactions, yes, right? Definitely. You know, if you see somebody who's complaining constantly about, about their practices, that's not something that's going to look very favorably for you, nope. you know? So I think not to the right programs, at least. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so I think it's, you know, we live in a time where we all have to be aware of, of what we put out there, right? Whether you're applying for a job or you want to get recruited to swim at a school. And I think it was really enlightening to hear what Dave had to say about that. Um, you know, and I, I think it was uh, great of him, generous of him to be upfront with that, right? Because, you know, the recruiting processes and stuff are very competitive, for you sure. know, so for you're sure. not always wanting to give away uh, not to use the same phrase, but your secret sauce, you yeah. know, of how you're going <laughs> about it. Right. Because the success of recruiting is really what's going to dictate your success yeah. in the pool. And you can see a pretty big difference. I mean, there's a wide array of coaches in college yeah. swimming. You have someone like Eddie Reese, who's been there, done that. He has plenty of championships. He can literally do the Pat Riley and just drop his rings on the table yeah. and you'll go there. Um, and then you have much younger coaches who are basically just coming to the helm and they're able to use some of these no more modern tools that they're actually noticing. For sure. Someone like Dave, you know, 
while he may not be social media savvy, he understands that that's, that's something that he needs to implement into his recruiting process. Yeah. Um, speaking to the fact that he may not be using social media his on his own, you can still see, you know, for example, if you have a swimmer that's Snapchatting Fortnite up at like 1 a.m. and they have 5 a.m. practice, or if there's a swimmer that's watching Netflix at 8 o'clock and they're tucked into bed with their dog, you can clearly see the motivation differences in both of those athletes. And if you're really trying to change the culture of your program, you know which one you're going to pick from that. So um, if you're a coach watching, let us know if you want some comments or if you want us to go over a recruiting process. Um, if you're a swimmer watching, we've been, we've been through the stresses of recruiting. We, yeah. we totally want to talk about it. We want to bring up all these different minute details. But um, yeah, let us know if you guys want, want us to watch that in the comments yeah. below. Yeah, yeah. Comment, you know, uh, if you have any specific questions about about recruiting you know uh, even stuff that maybe you know, we need to go out and ask some of our connections in the coaching world or swimming world you know definitely ask we'll do that right yes, we're, we're sure. here to provide you guys information as best we can right you know we've been around the sport for a while you know so we want to we want to share the the knowledge share spread the love yep so you know definitely don't don't be afraid to drop a comment and if you guys want to spread the love with us, we would really appreciate it. Obviously, the podcast is new, and we've really appreciated all of the great uh, celebration of it being here. So head on over to wherever you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Apple. Um, also, head on over to the YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to us. Ring that bell yeah, for hit us. that notification bell. And leave any comments on what you guys want to see in our next episodes. Thank you so much to everybody for watching and listening and thank you so much to dave guyer yep. for sitting down and taking the time to talk yeah, to welcoming us. us into their uh their pool it yeah. was great awesome guys thank you so much we'll catch you in the next one peace see you